<laughs> Look, the four methods of farming. Uh, grain output will increase too, won't it? Yes. Grain output in our prefecture is expected to exceed the record high and reach about 650 million kilograms. Mm. Of course, all of us are assuming that no severe drought will occur this summer. Um, a 35% growth is estimated this year. So, to a certain extent, the harvest is still subject to weather conditions. Yes. And we plan to resolve that issue by cultivating other plants like peanuts and fruits. We're also planning to breed livestock and get into aquaculture. We'll encourage small-scale ventures like brick factories or tile factories, mm -hmm. small coal mines, mm -hmm. even logging. Fast-growing trees can be planted. Uh, take Polonia, for example. The wood is commercially valuable in Japan, mm -hmm. and we're also looking into long-distance transport or garments production. Oh. The provincial party's pleased with the work carried out in Wahiwa. <laughs> and because of them, resolving the issue of food for peasants is already considered a great achievement. Mm. From this perspective, the poorest Huang Yuan prefecture has now progressed significantly. Mm. Only liberating one's mind and adhering to reform is our way out of poverty. Our country suffers perennially from water shortage, especially in the north. Relying on irrigation won't solve it. That's why farming is divided into agriculture by irrigation and drought-resistant agriculture. It's all about improving soil conditions to reserve natural rainfall. I think that the four methods of farming is a model for drought-resistant agriculture experience. Ah. Secretary Tsio, may I suggest that you organize a nationwide drought-resistant agriculture conference in Wang Yuan? Good idea. And give priority to inviting the northern provinces to come take part. Oh, I will. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> How do you do? Sir! <laughs> How are you? Uh, we're from the same town. I see. Yeah. Well, sir, yes. how many children do you have? I have six. Oh, and the land that you till? About an acre, sir. Oh, I see. And how's everything with you? Uh, everything's fine, sir. Oh, good. May I ask, what do you need most these days? Chemical fertilizer, and also a bicycle and sewing machine. But we want good quality ones. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Chief, what do you think is the hardest task to implement in your town these days? That would be birth control, sir. <laughs> the Vice Premier's two-day inspection came to a satisfactory conclusion. Leaving an endearing impression on the lowly residents of the village, he departed Huang Yuan. The government leaders have commended and given high marks to your team's work in Huang Yuan, Secretary Tian. There's still a lot of work to do. Key instructions of the leaders concerning Huang Yuan must be implemented. Yes, sir. It will be done. Good. Sit down. In the last two years, I've focused my energy mainly on implementing the production responsibility system in the Central Plains. Mm -hmm. Your production system centered on households has been implemented for more than a year. But the villages located in the Central Plains still don't practice it. Now, it's not the people who refuse to implement it. It's the leaders of this region who have been resistant all this time. They refuse to budge. They are diverse opinions, even among the provincial party committee leaders themselves. For instance, Comrade Wu Bin believes that implementing it across the entire Central Plains is unnecessary. The reason is, the large collectives there have been performing quite well. Secretary Xiao, I think it's time to put a stop to that kind of thinking, for their sake. I ask you to come here with me, because I have something important to discuss with you. I want to talk to you about your work transfer. Transfer? Mm-hmm. Why has someone lodged a complaint against me? Earlier, I spoke to you about reforming the Central Plains. We are hoping that you can bring about a breakthrough. The Provincial Committee decided to appoint you as Deputy Secretary of the Shanxi Provincial Committee and Baokang City Committee Secretary. The Central Department sent people to Huang Yuan for a review, and they were very pleased with you, Fuja. 
I thought someone lodged a complaint against me, and that they had come to investigate me. <laughs> but Secretary Xiao, hmm. the work has only begun in Huangyuan. I can't leave yet. Oh, but the decision of the department cannot be denied. I understand, but can I transfer after the High Yield Region program has been implemented? Yes, of course. Um, what will happen to the Wang Yuan team? Well, the preliminary consideration is that Comrade Gao Fenga will be appointed to another prefecture. Comrade Feng Shikuan will take over as commissioner, and Comrade Zhang Guan as secretary. Comrade Gao Fenga cannot leave. Why? From what I understand, he was the one who initiated the campaign to oppose you, Chen Fuzhou, correct? Yes, that's true. But it doesn't mean he was wrong. Comrade Gao Fengga is very competent. He firmly supports reform. Good. I'll inform the committee about this. <sighs> I'm going to buy some meat. Uh, brother. How much is this stuff oh, no. Hey, isn't he the father of Sun Shao Wang? Well, he is. His son is popular here in Shiguji village. Shao Wang was a farmer once, but is now a successful factory owner. Yes, He's known that's to be kind. And it's also popular in Shuangshui village and other areas. His son's brick factory is getting bigger and bigger. So he's getting richer and richer. And I heard that Sun Xiaowan has also acquired the brick and tile factory in town and has gone beyond Asia. <laughs> Did you hear that? Xiaowan's made you very popular here at the Shiguzhi Market Fair. Look at this. Even the butcher has given you the best cut of meat. <laughs> I've been buying at the market for years and have never received such praise and favor. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Let's go. Oh, no, I got Are you it. sure? Yes. Uncle Yuha! Huh? Here we go. Oh, hello. I Hi, see man. you bought some hello. meat again, huh? That's what I was craving for some. I mean, <laughs> Uncle Yu is always buying meat. It's not because he wants to show off or because he's a glutton. I'm it's not. because hmm. Uncle Yuha's new cave house will be completed soon. Is that so? <laughs> That's because they're very wealthy now. <laughs> I, <gotta get> <laughs> going. I need to bring this meat home right away. Take care. Why did you tell him about the cave dwelling? I'm so embarrassed. There's nothing wrong with that, Uncle. You should be very proud. I'm not used to it. <laughs> Uncle. When we get back, I have to help Shawan buy some materials. What? He told me that he wanted to convert your courtyard into the best in the village. Oh, <laughs> He's so busy these days reinforcing the new cave house and caring for Shulian and his little daughter, so I feel that he needs that's a helping true. hand. He's my good friend after all, right, Uncle? Uh, that's very <laughs> kind of you. Then again, since I'm old already, I don't worry too much about having a nice home or courtyard. So why bother reinforcing a cave dwelling, I ask you? Oh, Uncle Yuha, you must understand Shawan. Your entire family has been down and out for more than half of your life. Building this cave house at this opportune time is just showing the people in the village that your family has finally prospered. Yes, it's that yes. simple. I understand that. I'm proud of what he has achieved. Me too. I'm very proud of Xiao Bing too, as well as Lan Shan. <laughs> Xiao Wan also now enjoys a good reputation. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I have to tell you though, I'm very worried about my daughter, Lan Wa. She busies herself at home and in the fields while Wa Mangya is bumming around in the city. He's still doing that? Yes, he is. What's got it into him? Who's there? Open up! Inspection! Uh, uh, coming! Uh, just a minute! Please wait! Where are you from? A peasant from Guanxi, Shigaji, from Shanxi province, here in Shanghai for some business. I'm not a fugitive or a gangster. What do you do? I'm a peasant. I came here to Shanghai to engage in business.
This is me. What the happened to me? <laughs> How did I end up like this? <laughs> So much. <laughs> Wang Man Yang, staring at his reflection from this cracked mirror, finally realized who he was, what kind of person he was, and how he had wasted his life like a vagrant. This bum suddenly began to miss his former life with his wife, his young children, and his home with a messy kitchen, broken walls, and courtyard. Undeniably, a person's life can sometimes change as a result of an extremely unfortunate event, which helps them see the present state they are in. And this is what happened to Wang Manya. I want to go home. I want to go home. Welcome, Come everyone. Come on in. Make sure you're watching. I'm glad you're here. See the roof? We're celebrating oh, because you have a new house now. <laughs> Do you want to go back inside? The crowd is getting nice. Yeah. Show us. Guess who's Where's back? It's your brother-in-law. Do you like so? Who's back? It's Mama Nye's back. Mama Nye's here? Yes, he is. What did you eat? And where did you sleep when you were away? The sky was my blanket, and the earth my mat. Sounds marvelous. Lanwa, I've thought things through. I'm not going anywhere anymore. I'll be with you every day. Are you really going to stay? You won't go to Great Beijing or Great Shanghai? Why not go to America? Great Beijing, Great Shanghai. Even if you allow me to go to Great America now, I won't go. Even if you kill me. All my life I've been running around, doing this and that. But in the end, I have nothing to show for it. Anwa, I've never given you anything. I'm not leaving. Even if you kill me, I won't leave. Why did I come back? Who came back? Tell me. I saw my reflection on a broken mirror in Shanghai. I saw my ragged appearance. My disheveled hair and my furrowed and sallow skin. Good. Serves you right. So what did that mirror reveal to you, huh? Was it the monster that you've become, or was it the human Wang Manya? Tell us, are you the human or the demon? I am the human Wang Manya. A human. Grandma. It's the human who has returned. I admit I was a demon once. <laughs> but now I'm human. It's the human who has come back. Brother-in-law, right. will It'll you stay okay. put this time? It's okay. I'm almost 40 years old, Julia. I've wandered all these years. I've been to so many different places and ended up with white hair with nothing else to show for it. I'm just discovering what I should have given importance to years ago. I am never leaving my children and my wife again. I'm making this promise to you in front of all who are present here. I'm never leaving you again, Lanwa. 
Please forgive me, Lanoa! He's really vulnerable right now. Look at him, he's like a child who needs the protection of an adult. Lanoa is my precious wife. My children are my treasure. But at the moment, I feel that even Maud and Gordon are doing so much better than me. I realize too that I'm not as strong as the two of them. I know I'm not. And every time our two children would tell me about what's written in their school books, I don't understand any of it. Maybe because I can't read at all. But every time they call me father, I feel honored. Everyone knows I'm not good at doing anything and I'm not physically strong. All I know is how to get Lando water to drink or bring her some food to eat when she's out laboring in the fields. I used to tell you stories while you were planting, remember? Or sing you folk songs. This time I promise to do my share of the work. Just give me another chance, please. As long as we are together, I'll work very hard. Please take me back, Lanua. Father, as long as Magna can come home, I will do all the work. <laughs> provided he doesn't leave. That's a stupid idea. He abandoned the three of you. You already suffered so much. Your two children are like fatherless kids. He's groveling now. It doesn't mean he's staying for good. Don't be fooled again. Father. Be quiet. I think he came back because he wants to work at Shawan's factory. Am I right, Mangya? Only Shawan can decide if he wants to hire Mangya or not. You better ask him yourself. Mangya. I know for a fact that you can't do anything. It's fine. Tomorrow, you can come to my brick factory. As long as you report to work every day, I'll pay you a salary every month. I can even assign you to handle the sales. You can go wherever you want, across the country and elsewhere. I have at my doorstep a brand new, very shiny bicycle. You can use it to do your work. I'll give it to you. Chawan, are you sure? I'll take you in on one condition. What's that? I want you to divorce my sister. Chawan, you're talking nonsense. Chawan, what What's are wrong, you huh? saying? No matter how despicable this loafer is, you can't make them get a divorce. As the saying goes, a good woman should not marry two men. What's more, the children need their father. Divorce is not the answer, isn't uh, that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Your Aunt Funying is right, you know. Shawan, you should persuade people to reconcile, not to split up. Sister, have you forgotten about his affair with that Nanyang woman? You asked for a divorce and then you change your mind afterwards. He always says he's sorry and you take him back. As soon as you do, he leaves you and your children again. Isn't it enough that he lied to you more than once? And he will never stop! You want that? Shawan, you're my own flesh and blood. Why are you doing this to me? I don't agree. Whether human or demon, there will be no divorce. No divorce in this family. I won't allow it. I'm going to ask you again. Will you divorce her or not? No, I won't. Father. Please bring everyone else outside. I want to have a word with Mangya alone. Go on, please. Shawan. I don't care if you agree or not. You must file for a divorce with my sister right away. 
I won't do that. And why not? All of you know she loves me with all her heart. None of you know that I too love her with all my heart. Nobody believes your lies! I will cut off my own leg! I'll prove it to all of you! Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop it, give me the axe! Give me the axe! Come on! Come back to me! Come on! Let go! Let go! Stop it! Let go! Calm down! Give me the Give it back! Give it back! Have you lost your mind? I'll prove it to all of you! I'll prove it to all of you! Tawan. I don't want a divorce. I really don't want a divorce than who I am. I would rather cut my leg off than get a divorce from Lanwa. I'll die. Father, what do you say? You decide. I think that this time, Wamanya really means what he's saying. If he can really change for the better, then my sister will have a complete family. Why don't we give him a chance? I think it's best if I allow him to work at the brick factory. Don't put him in charge of sales. The minute he leaves home, he'll become a bum again. Don't worry. I won't, Father. Let's go. <laughs> Let us start counting again. Let us start counting again. Let's start counting again. Let us start counting again. In recent days, Changes in the global atmospheric circulation has caused heavy thunderstorms to develop over Shanxi province. Torrential and non-stop rains fell for several days. The river overflowed, floodwaters exceeded the 400-year record high, and the city was in imminent danger of being submerged. The city and local party committee leaders took action immediately amid the panic. The military was also tapped to help in assessing the situation and to lend a hand should there be a need for evacuation. Together, they formed a flood crisis management command post and called for an urgent meeting to evaluate the impending calamity. There is an emergency such as this one. Communist Youth League members must also participate. Forget about drafting an order. Go outside and take a look. The flood has reached the edge of the city. The water in the upstream reservoir has already exceeded the warning level. Balkan City will be submerged soon. We're in danger. There's no time to draft an order. Send out emergency telegrams to the party committee and Lanzhou military area commander. Yes, sir. Listen, Mayor Zhang, you should send someone to the broadcast station to inform the people of the city to evacuate at once. Tell them that in less than three hours, Han River's flow will exceed 27,500 cubic meters per second. The whole city will be underwater. Therefore, before 4 p.m. today, all residents of Dongguan and Siguan, the lowest lying area, must evacuate. All residents in the central district must also evacuate before 6 p.m. In addition, we must mobilize the youth and the people's militia of the city at once. Order them to get ready to fight the flood and for disaster relief. Most families here are not wired to the broadcast facility. I'm afraid they won't hear the command. Then we must go out into the streets and inform them door to door. What? Door to door? The party trusts me and chose me as secretary of Baokong City and in charge of this operation. I'll take this responsibility. 
I'll leave. We'll go to the streets with megaphones and inform every household door to door. Hurry, let's go. Let's go, everyone. Xiaoping, why are you packing so much stuff? That's because I'm bringing my girlfriend home. Tian Xiaosha? Well, you're one lucky fella, aren't you? <laughs> your parents must be happy. I think your whole village must be bustling with excitement. <laughs> Out reporting. Why are you looking for him? He's out? Yes. That's too bad. I just received breaking news. I was going to ask Gao Lan to cover it. I looked for him as soon as I heard it, but he's not in the office. What event is he covering? When will he be back? Why? What happened? What's the big news? There's a catastrophic flood in Baokan. What? Are you sure about yes. that? Yes. The flood is going to submerge the city soon. Secretary Kiao of the province will personally go to the front line shortly. My father and the provincial leaders will go with him. It looks like Gao Lang, who prides himself for being fearless, won't get this chance then. What are you talking about? Because I want to go. You? Uh-huh. No way. Xiao Xia, it's just too risky for a woman to go. Well, I drive on risk, Xiong Piang, or haven't you heard? I'm known for my adventurous and bold spirit. Thanks for the tip. Wait! Xiao Xia! Dear local leader of Baokong, I'm sure you'll forget to eat again when you get busy. Now wait for me. Ken hmm? Xia, telephone. A call from Daiwan Coal Mine. Oh, thank you. I'll be there. Hello, Xiaoping? It's been raining these past few days. Dress warmly so you won't catch a cold. Remember to bring an umbrella when you go out. Yes, don't worry, dear. I'll be fine. I will take good care of myself. Is there anything else? Nothing in particular. It's been raining hard, so work at the mines suspended for a couple of days. I have a bit of time to rest in the dorm to read some books. And to call you. Oh, I checked the calendar. Our date is just three days away. You haven't forgotten, have you? Have you, Shosha? The thought of being able to see you in three days. I feel so giddy. Xiaoping, I'm... I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. What? You... What's wrong? Uh, uh, are you sick? Did something happen to you? Uh, no, no, I'm okay. It's just that I managed to grab an urgent reporting assignment, so I have to leave immediately. <laughs> What urgent assignment is that? And can you get someone to replace you? I am not giving this up. I fought hard to snatch this assignment from Gao Lang. Gao Lang? Xiao Xia. It's not that I don't understand you. What could possibly be more important than our date? Than you going to Shuangshui to meet my father and my grandma? Xiao Xia, do you know how much I value this date? Xiaoping, don't be so sensitive. I... When my assignment is completed, I will go to Shuangshui with you. I'll meet your father and your grandma as your fiancé. I swear. But I don't have time right now. Let's talk about this later, okay? Why are you in a hurry? Don't you even have time to talk to me? Helping don't be like that. I really must get going now. If I don't leave right away, it'll be too late. Nausha, hurry up! I'm coming! Right. I understand. I'm letting you go. What do you mean you're letting me go? Sin Xiaoping, what do you mean by that? Yep. I thought you said you understood me. I have to go now. Finish your call already. Sister Xiao Xia, Wang Chen, what are you doing here? I heard from Kong Tiang. You're going to the flood management center. I was worried, so I came here. I ran into Gao Lan. Xiao Xia. Stop! I'm not giving up this assignment. You can't make me. Please listen to me. 
I came here to tell you that this assignment is too dangerous for you. The paper stipulates that female employees are forbidden to go. They're all at the train station now, and I'm on my way to meet them. You requested for a holiday break. You should take it. Leave the reporting to us. Why aren't female reporters allowed to go to the front line? What? Men aren't afraid of danger, but we are? I am not afraid. Sister Xiaoxia, my brother wrote to say that you were to go back to Shuangshui village with him to meet our family. But if you go now, you won't be able to meet him. Don't worry, Lan Sheng. I'll go straight to Shuangshui village as soon as I'm done with this assignment. Tongyang, I know your father is a leader in the province. He's on his way there. Where is he now? Sister, I know that to a reporter like you, this kind of opportunity comes once in a lifetime. But since the paper won't let you go, I beg you not to go as well. I agree with her. Tell me. Fine, I'll tell you. They will board a helicopter to the flood management office today. They haven't left yet. If you go now, you should be able to catch them. I'm sure I'll get there before all of you. Wait! Xiao Xia! That was Shen Xiaoping on the phone, was it? <laughs> I heard Lan Shang mention that you'll be meeting your family after this. Yes. Xiaoping is going to formally introduce me to them as his fiance. It seems I really don't have a chance. Well then, I wish you the best. Gao Lang, I regard this rain as baptism for Xiaoping and I. Thank you. This area is far from Han River, and at a higher terrain, we'll bring the people there. The helicopter is here. When will Governor One arrive? He got off the train ten minutes ago. He should be here soon. Good. Sorry, excuse me. Hello, sir. I'm a reporter for the newspaper. Please allow me to board the airplane to go to the disaster area with you. But there aren't any more seats. Oh, but I don't need a seat. I just need you to let me board a plane. If there's space, I'll stand. Look, I'm really a reporter for the paper. I'm assigned to cover the disaster area. How did you know we are going to the disaster area? Who told you about this? Um, it doesn't matter who told me about this, sir. I just want to be able to get on your plane and report about the situation at Baogong City. I'm sure you know that this is a serious matter. We'll just be an hour away, young lady. I'm not going to be in your way. I am a reporter. It's my job to inform the people about this calamity and the rescue operations. If you don't allow me, you'll be hindering me from doing my job. Huh? <laughs> Did you hear that? I meant what I said. You can't come with us. There's no space for you on the plane. Make space for me then. You're just being a bully because I happen to be a woman. Watch your mouth. Please keep in mind who you're talking to. I don't care who he is. Please, sir, I won't get in your way. I promise you. Make space for her. She can come. Thank you.
Xiaoping's phone conversation with Xiao Xiao earlier that day was not a cheerful one. Nonetheless, these young lovers were full of passion and guileless dreams. They had pleasant fantasies about their date, and in their minds it was going to be special. And to both of them, no other experience in life can compare to the moment they profess their love for each other in front of their families. We now urgently require relief supplies, food, medical supplies. We request assistance from the government. The main mission for fighting the flood now is to rescue human life. We will spare no effort in rescuing the life and property of the people. Also, Comrade Fuja, the Secretary Tiao. How do you do? What's the situation? Evacuation has begun. We'll release water to reduce flooding. Also, we've adopted measures, including soldiers going to every street and alley, to ensure that the evacuation message is being relayed. Good. Excuse me. So you're the Provincial Party Committee Secretary? Yes. I am Chao Bon. Uh, oh, how do you do? Pardon my rudeness. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> Why are you here? Uh, to cover the news. Oh, huh? wait a minute. Do you know each other? Oh, we're from the same village. I interviewed Secretary Tian before. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Do you know how bold this girl is, Fuja? She actually tried to crowd out a seat for me. She fought with me. She told me she needed to get to the front line to get her stuff. Well, young lady, you've got guts, and I admire that. Go on, get some rest. We have work to do. I have work to do, too. Currently, evacuation of the people from Dongguan and Siguan is almost complete. In this area, some people are still trapped in their homes. The troops were sent there to help rescue them. We are waiting for their report. Good. Well done. Comrade Fuja, I will now take over your command for 20 minutes. Secretary Tiao. I heard that. Since you became Flood Crisis Commander, you haven't slept a wink, or eaten anything at all. Even Iron Man won't be able to endure this. I now order you to take a 20-minute break Secretary and take a nap. Secretary Tsiao, Secretary Tsiao, let's do that. If you don't rest, I shall, in the name of the Provincial Party, relieve you of your duty as Flood Crisis Commander. Now, please rest. Go on. Secretary Tsiao. What is the status of the reservoirs upstream? Have the people in the area been evacuated yet? That's good. First press release for this trip. Mm. I've written it on board the plane. I'm trying to edit it now. <sighs> Father, mm? you always forget to eat when you're busy. Does your stomach hurt? Yes. <sighs> oh, when I left today, I brought a pack of biscuits especially for you. These are soda crackers. They're good for your stomach. You better eat some now. Here you go. This is the first press release you've written on the plane? Yes. I'll help you edit it. Mm. Mm. You read, I'll listen. Mm. There is no telling how many people have been swept away by the flood now. But one thing is very clear. There are still many people who are trapped in the flood and are in very serious and palpable danger. In addition to the rescue operations, the city is anxiously waiting for external assistance from Beijing. This city has not given up hope yet. It's fighting hard to survive. It is not merely relying on external assistance. Rather, it is tenaciously defying the flood, rescuing itself. 
This is because it knows that the provincial capital cares about it. Beijing cares about it. The people of the entire nation care about it. And at its back, a billion people stand as its mighty shield. The city is filled with intense hope for its own survival. It is not merely hope, but also determination to wrestle with the flood. When we are confronted with major disasters, we see this nation's national character and the advantages of being a socialist country. In the tense battle to rescue the masses, more than 30 People's Liberation Army warriors have laid down their own lives to rescue the citizens of this city. Father, I have something I want to say to you. Mm. After this assignment, I will go to Shuangshui village. Mm. Oh. Go visit your uncle for me. When I go back this time, I am not going as your daughter or the niece of your older brother. I am going as Sun Xiaoping's girlfriend. I'm going back there as his fiancée to visit his family members. 